A street. What is a street? A street is many things. It is a road lined with buildings. It is a place for cars and their cargo. Asphalt and yellow tracks that draw the eyes. It is a place for feet. For shoes that know the way nearly as much as you do. With every thud and click, they speak to the beat of a song sung besides you, as you are merely an observer. I'm walking in Bushwick. It's a Monday night, and a beautiful one at that. It's dark, but there are people out and about most of the time. Even in the cut, the street lamps block the shade. But maybe I just think that because I'm used to it. I'm on my way to my friend's apartment. They're having a party. It should be cool, I guess, but I like where I'm at now. Let me focus on this for just a minute. It is a habitat of parasites that swarm and feed on the underbelly of a much larger animal, which happens to be rotting. It is an ecosystem of systems within systems within a system. Disrupt the balance so delicately, remove one block, and watch it topple over, collapse into a muddle of stinking flesh and bared teeth. Nowhere to go but the next row. There is so much art on this brick and metal, I don't even know where to begin. You might not think of the night as the time to appreciate art, because of course you can see better during the day. But really, there is no other appropriate time for it, because this art is a creature of the darkness. It is in the sense that artists would come out at the hour of midnight and mayhem to tag up. But it is also an art formed of dark times. It is the expression of urban decay, the voice of those who scream out resistance against authority and a stratified society, but nobody hears them. The marginalized and disenfranchised youth that nobody sees lest they write their name here. It is a stage for actors of an uncommon breed. There is no script, but as the storyline unfolds, you are hypnotized by the adeptness of the drama, intoxicated by the fumes that could be so real if only. And in your thrall, you find yourself being pulled by the hair into the midst of it. You may not have chosen it or realized that it chose you. I can't quite fathom what it means for me to be here, deeply appreciating their expression, without knowing their struggles. I don't know if the person who painted this mural does either. Do they know the street, or are they some kid from the burbs fresh out of art school? Does it matter? Does it detract from my enjoyment of it? Does my enjoyment of it detract from its intended or unintended purpose, its meaning? Artists from all over the world come to paint here. It's a new mecca of the clacking cans. This place is so damn hot it might as well burn down again. It is a moment of collision. Tangles of light beams that violently burst on impact into millions of droplets of all shapes and colors. The splatter left on the walls as a testament to their brilliance for all to see. I don't think anyone can argue that the murals aren't beautiful. Well, actually, some can and do. 
In particular, one native graffiti writer has been known to deface the murals painted under charge of the Bushwick Collective, which is operated by another native artist. The collective works with local building owners who agree to have murals go up on their walls and spaces are rotated on a regular basis, featuring world-renowned artists. The collective has a few rules though, nothing too political and no graffiti writing. The shift from lettered graffiti to spray-painted murals, quote-unquote street art, is just one of many signs of the revitalization that has taken hold of this neighborhood. Businesses love the attention and tourism it attracts. Mothers love that they don't have to worry about their kids walking home at night. And we all love the way it makes us feel. The swirling colors two stories high. The imaginary friend that is running along by our side with just a glance to the left. It makes the neighborhood feel alive and thriving in an atmosphere that would otherwise be dismal and gray. If my opinion counts for anything, I don't disapprove of what the Bushwick Collective is trying to do. I think the art brings a lot to the neighborhood, but I also feel for the protesting of it, because in it there is no place for graffiti writing, the original form of the art which is inherently political and indicative of strife and social disorder. By having only murals, the Collective seeks to mask these tensions which still exist and reduces writers to vandals. Though I think the protests could be made in more constructive ways than the defacement of art. Writing has an equal place on the streets as murals do, and to keep that alive is to keep in sight the struggles and conditions through which it emerged. Not to praise it, but to remember it in order to see a brighter future. When it comes down to it, both styles of street art are about hope. I may be an agent of gentrification as much as the next transplant that comes along, but when I consider what people like me and those I know are doing here, I am hopeful that we can build something together and that our presence is not a cause for concern. What is concerning is when people come here acting like they're conquering a new frontier and trying to change it to make it better for themselves and forgetting about all the people who were here from the start and made it what it is. The streets won't forget, and if you just take a moment to listen to their song, neither will you.